Hi fellow traders, I know it's been a couple weeks since you've seen me, but we've been traveling, going to visit family. That's why I do what I do, uh, to be able to go visit family and have the means to go when they, we, they invite us somewhere, we're able to go. Um, you know, we drove nine hours all the way to Pennsylvania to go to a production that our nephew was in. You know, and to be able to do that and, you know, without worrying about anything, I mean, that means the most to me. You know, not going on a damn cruise or these exotic places or whatever. None of that's important to me. What's important to me is is family. And that, that's number one for me. <clears throat> but, um, you know, the market over the last couple of weeks have been... It gave me a head fake. You know, the last time we talked, um, it was running into that 281-ish level that it ran into back in November, December. The last time it hit that, that's when we got that huge pullback. And I was looking at it and thinking that, okay, when we hit it, we'll get a, a significant pullback. And that's what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. Well, it gave me a head fake in that it hit it and it pulled back a little bit. And then it went back and made a higher high. And as soon as it made that higher high, that's when that significant pullback happened. Um, and it, it kind of caught me by surprise and it ended up messing me up on that CNX swing trade I had. I mean, I was over 10% on it. And ended up having to close it out because the market was rolling over. And it took it below the 20. So I had to take it off um, and only got like 3.5% on it. You know, very disappointing when I was over 10%. It was 30 cents away from my target before the market decided to um, crap out on me. But we're in the middle of a significant pullback. It's pulled back um, five days in a row now. Um, I know Friday was a little bounce, but it still closed lower than the previous day's close. So that still constitutes a negative day. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see, are we going to continue to sell on, selling off? I think there's another moving average below it, the, the 90. Um, it may pull back to it, um, but I'm going to wait. I'm kind of holding on my swing trades until I see where this market is going to go. Um, there's a couple of oversold that opportunities that I really think would give me a good shot, but you know we'll have to see. I'm, I'm going to be patient. I'm not going to rush this thing. So you know we've got a couple of things coming up. Um, we've got the retail sales report coming out on Tuesday. We've got the new housing. Um, report come out on Thursday and there's something else I can't remember right now at the top of my head there's another significant report coming out I think the inflation report coming out next week um, and, and a lot of the, the reading that I did you know on the market conditions and what we can expect you know I like to read other people's Opinions and analysis. People that that I know know what they're talking about, um, and everybody's using that term cautiously optimistic, and that's kind of what you see in the market. You know, the the reduced volume. Now I know we're we're wrapping up earnings season, and we got probably another month before it start. You know, earnings starts kicking off again, so it, it's gonna be a little dull for the next several weeks but it just feels it just felt kind of funny to me so I, I don't I'm kind of waiting to see where we're going to go it's like everybody else everybody's sitting around waiting on everybody else and everybody's cautiously optimistic but you know I guess time will tell you know we as, as independent day traders we don't have the ability to move the market or anything like that so what we have to do is 
watch and let the market dictate to us where it wants to go and then we take advantage. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing there. All right, so the question I got today, um, and I think I've answered it or a similar question, but maybe I didn't do it well enough. Um, and so I, I keep getting questions about my stats. What's my win-loss ratio? Um, how much did I make versus how much did I lose? What's my p &L ratio? You know, my accuracy. And, you know, none of that means anything to me. I don't track it. it what it does is it causes what I call paralysis by analysis. And, you know, if you don't understand, I need to, to, to give you, let me set this. I was in a community when I was, you know, starting to really blossom or bloom or whatever. And the focus was on accuracy. And the focus was on, you know, P&L ratio. You know, making your losers half of what your winners are. And, you know, tracking those stats. And in 2015, I could make mistake after mistake after mistake and still make money. That's just the way the market was. So I was focusing on those stats. My accuracy was on point. Everything was just like beautiful. But it was really because the market was so good. 2016 hit and I started struggling with my accuracy. And I wasn't doing anything different. It's just that the moves, the market wasn't making the moves that it was, you know, in 2015. Um, and I didn't understand why. But the best thing that ever happened to me was... My brother-in-law introducing me to this um, professional trader. I mean, a real-life professional day trader. So this guy had worked in the pit. You know, he worked on the floor. He had worked for an investment bank. Um, he had worked for a mutual fund. And now he's running a private mutual fund. He's retired, running a private mutual fund. And it's mainly his money, but, you know, his family some of his family's invested in it too but it's mainly his money and you know one of the first questions I asked him was you know what's your accuracy you know what's your win win rate on the strategies that you trade and he looked at me like I was crazy he was like why is that important to you and you know I, it caught me I didn't really know and I was like I'm thinking that this is what we need to be looking at. You know, when we're looking at strategies and stuff. He's like, what my win rate is has nothing to do with what your win, win rate would be. Nothing. Okay? Because it's all about how you execute. He said the, the most important part to this trading thing, you don't, the more you analyze and crunch numbers, the worse your trading is going to be. It's like as a professional trader, when I was trading, you know, for the investment bank, they paid people to analyze our numbers. All we did was execute. All they wanted us to do was focus on executing our trades. And because they knew that if we sat here and analyzed our numbers and our win rate and and all of these other numbers, how much money we made on Monday, on Mondays versus Wednesdays versus Fridays, and it would cause us to not be able to trade. We couldn't trade freely and without fear of messing up. So you need to do the same thing. It's like if you want some, if you want your numbers, pay somebody to crunch them for you. You know, you don't need to do that. It's like you don't want to see any numbers. It's like what I use is an equity curve. That's the only thing I look at. And then he showed me it. And, and here in a minute, I think the only way I can do this is to actually illustrate it for you. And I'm going to do that here in a minute. But, you know, the, the main thing, I just want to get the point across, is that the more you focus on your numbers, the more it's going to affect your trading. And here's what I mean. I found myself 
trying to keep this 75, 76, 77 percent win rate so bad that I would I would make my trading plans, have solid trading plans, and that right before the market opened, I started coming up with reasons why I shouldn't take this trade. Why this trade's not gonna work. And that's called paralysis by analysis. And so I sat back and watched all these trades work without me because I convinced myself not to take that trade because I'm trying to protect my win ratio. And it makes absolutely no sense. The same way with um, you know, any of all of these other numbers. It's like I was looking at, okay, Monday, you know, there was a time where Wednesday was my worst day. So I would not trade on Wednesday or I would just sit back on Wednesday. And then in a couple weeks, Wednesday started being the best days and Tuesdays were my worst days. And I realized the market changes. So trying to use these numbers, it doesn't matter. And, you know, so what he said makes sense. The only thing that you want to use to analyze your growth is your equity curve. What does your equity curve show you? Is it constantly going up with, you know, with a couple of little dips here and there? Or are you going up and then taking these huge drawdowns and then going up some more? taking these huge drawdowns you know what is your equity curve telling you and then on the equity curve you're not concerned about numbers he's like because if you're sitting here looking at numbers the guy next to you you know may be reporting higher numbers you don't know whether he's doing it or not he may just be saying that and you start comparing your numbers to that person's numbers and then you start um, feeling, you know, bad. You start feeling like, man, you know, something's not right here. You know, my numbers are so bad and this guy's reporting these good numbers. You know, why can't my numbers be this good? And, you know, it's, it causes us to start making mistakes and start doing things outside of what we need to do in order to be successful. So it's really, really important, guys. Stop. It's just like with the PL. You know, I tell I tell you stop focusing on the PL because you start trading your PL. And when you start focusing on your numbers, your stats, then you start trading your stats. And you're not trading the chart. And you're not trading you're not trading the um, <clears throat> the stock. You're not trading the chart. You're not trading the market. And that's detrimental to your progress as a trader. So when you're looking at how well you're doing, if you ask yourself, you know, how do I know whether I'm doing good or I'm growing if I don't have, not looking at my numbers, you use the equity curve. And it's just a line that it's either going up or down or sideways. You know, easy, very easy to read. And if it's going sideways, you know that you are consistent. You've hit a point where you're consistent. You know, you need to probably tweak something so that you can start moving back up again. If you're starting to go down, you know, you're losing um, contact or connection with the market and you need to go back and assess what is the market doing differently and how do you need to adapt to it. You don't need stats to tell you that. You know, you don't need to know um, what days and what times you do the best because that's going to change. The market's going to change. You know, just as simple as that. You got to be ready to change with it. Okay? So, um, that's enough ranting for right now. Let's take a look at a couple of these um, examples here real quick. 
and it should help illustrate my point. All right, guys, now I'm going to illustrate now why I feel you shouldn't focus on your stats when you're trying to um, improve your trading or really trying to track your progress. You know, your stats just won't, they won't give you the story. And like I said, numbers will continue to drive you insane, to be honest with you. So the reason why you shouldn't focus on your stats, it can have devastating effects on your trading mindset okay it creates lack of confidence remember what i said if you start comparing your stats to other people and you know other people may you know blow up their stats and they're not quite accurate and then you start losing confidence because you can't seem to make what they're making or you know that it creates problems then you then you bring fear into it and you start being scared to take trades. You know, you build your trade plan. You understand what it takes. And then you start coming up with ways why you can't make it. Why you shouldn't take the trade. Because you're trying to protect your stats. You're trying to, to keep that big win, win percentage. Or you're trying to keep that big P&L percentage. The reality is... All of that's done in the in the planning phase. When you plan a stock, you already plan a, at least two to one profit loss ratio. Okay, if you execute that trade and it works, you're gonna get that. Now sometimes a stock doesn't work a hundred percent, and you may end up with one to one, or sometimes it works better. You may end up with three or four to one, but it all balances out in the end. So you have to look at trading in a long term in a longer term versus day by day and then just tracking these stats so these numbers can really cause you to um, prevent you from focusing cause you not to focus on execution but focus on you know not losing focus on all the wrong things because all you need to do when you come on is once you build your trade plan nothing else should matter the only thing that matters should be executing that trade get taking it if it works great if it doesn't that's fine that's just part of trading let's move on you know and like i said i call this paralysis by analysis okay and that's what you want to avoid now just to give you an example these are the stats i'm talking about you know trying looking at all of this your average win rate like here this these are my stats from january 1st to now okay i've got a 67 percent win rate um and that's fine i don't care i could care it this could be 57 it could be 47 as long as my equity curve is moving in the right way none of this really matters okay because when i start focusing on this I start taking my mind off of execution and that's when things start to go south for me. You know, like I don't care about what my average winning trade is, you know, um, my average trade gain a lot. None of that stuff matters. What matters is, especially at this point, is that your equity curve is growing up, which means you are doing the right things. You're growing, your account's growing. And that's all you need to focus on. Like these stats here, performance by days of the week. You know, you can analyze this and say, well, Tuesday's my worst day, so this is the day I'm going to stop. And, you know, I'll focus on these other days. And the next thing you know, Friday's going to be your worst day or Monday will be your worst day. You know, that doesn't make sense. Same thing with the hours of the day. This changes with market conditions. And if you're sitting here focusing on this, you're going to always be behind the eight ball. Always be behind the eight ball. Same thing with price. Sitting here figuring out what price range is the best. This is going to change. Guys, next month, $20 to $50 stocks will probably be hot for me. And this will probably be low. I mean, you just don't know 
and you can't focus on that. You know, the thing is, build your watch list, execute your trade plans. That's it. Just like here, statistics. For the 26 winning days I had, if this is winning days versus losing days, 26 winning days, on the winning days, my accuracy is 83%. Duh. If I'm a, if it's a winning day, most of my trades are going to be winners. If it's a losing day, most of my trades are going to be losers. You know, why would I worry about this stuff at this point? It, it doesn't make sense. So it's equity curve. You focus on your equity curve. This is what I mean. It's just a solid line that shows your growth. I mean, you can even eliminate these numbers here. So all of this stuff I'm sharing with you is from my trader view. You know, I just download all my trades in the trader view, and this is how I get my equity curve. This is all I look at. So for the past 30 days, you're going to see, you're going to go up, trade sideways a little bit, go up. This, this is normal market conditions. And then here's a pullback. This is the big loss I took on the, um, the earnings trade, that one that didn't work out. And then we, you know, up. Look at this. This equity curve consistently moving up. You know, and this is over the last 30 days. This was my biggest month, um, February. You can see it started out the end of January. It was pretty flat. We were struggling. But this is normal. Okay. Then we go to the 60 day. I look at the 60 day curve. You know, does it show any issues? Only only big thing is this just one big, you know, bad day. It's just one day. And everything is in in upward movement. Same thing with this. Now, okay, this this equity curve, this has the last 90 days and the last 60 days, this has, you know, both my accounts added together. Um, starting in February, I kind of stopped that. So this is pretty much the gross P&L for my small account. Now gross, once you take away the, uh, well, no, this does, I can't remember. I know it says gross, but it does have the cost of the, um, cost of the commissions and all that stuff. But this is my this is just my small account. Um, but the 30 days and 60 days has both speed trader and short sure trader together. Um, but like I said, I'm separating it. I'm kind of keeping that separate now. And we're just focusing on this. You know, trading the five grand a month and then moving on. So I hope this explains it a little bit better for you guys. Um, so you understand why. This is easy to watch. If you want to black out these numbers, I suggest doing that. So all you want to do is see this line move up. You're going to get little pullbacks here, but you don't want sustained pullbacks going the other way. This is normal. The market, as it moves, this is normal. You look at a chart on the market, you get pullbacks. This is normal. Our trading mirrors the market, so to speak. So don't worry about it. You want to track your progress, track your equity curve. It's the best way to determine whether you are going in the right direction or not. All right. So if you guys have any questions, shoot me an email, ed at averagejoetrader.com. I'll be glad to help you out. Um, but have a great rest of the weekend, and I will see you Monday morning.